you guys. So today's video is going to be talking a little bit about my experience with a makeup no buy. If you have never seen my face before and you have no idea what I'm talking about, in 2019 I underwent a year long makeup no buy. I made tons of content around it. It was kind of my shtick for a while. 2020 saw a little bit of a divergence from that particular subject matter. I haven't really talked about it much and although I never made statements that the no buy would go on forever or anything like that, I definitely feel like having a year of not putting any type of restriction on myself financially when it pertains to makeup, I still learned a lot from it. And that's what we're going to talk about today. If you are new here, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell for lots of content like this coming very soon. I'll get into kind of why I'm choosing to talk about this right now in a couple of minutes, but there is a theme coming and you probably are going to want to be a part of it. So make sure you are subscribed and definitely come hang out with me on the rest of my social media platforms and come find me on Patreon. All that being said, let's just get started. So just to give you guys an idea of the parameters of a no buy, what it basically means, if you don't know, it's kind of this thing that only beauty YouTubers do. Like nobody in my real life is coming up to me and being like, Whitney, it's time for the no buy. It doesn't, it doesn't happen. It's just us weirdos on the internet. Um, but it's a particularly interesting thing to do when you are a content creator in the beauty space to make some sweeping declaration that you're not buying new makeup because new product releases, makeup hauls and makeup reviews are kind of the bread and butter of your YouTube channel. That's what your that's what makes you a beauty YouTuber, right? Um, so for me to take off a year of doing it and then not only have no struggle with it at all, but have the biggest uptick I've ever had in my YouTube career and on top of that had an endless amount of things to talk about, it really opened my eyes around kind of my motivations for buying makeup and then also my motivations for my job and in my career and like what I actually want out of it. Now there's a little bit of a caveat here. My mother died at the very end of 2019 and it put me into a very, very depressive state for most of the year. And as a result, YouTube just wasn't my priority. That's a big part of why I haven't talked about no buys or a whole lot of anti-consumerism content this year is because at one point, I, it was just hurting my spirit. Like I could barely deal with the bad feelings I was already having. So intentionally trying to like, I don't want to say that talking about anti-consumerism brings up bad feelings, but I, I needed to talk about things I liked. I wanted to talk about things I was excited about. I didn't want to talk about things I didn't like. Does that make sense? Like speak into the universe and all that. I just wasn't trying to be in that negativity, negativity bag this year. Uh, but I'm out of it now. I feel a lot better. And as a result, I feel the need to kind of shift my content a little bit in the next year, I almost said the next few months, but maybe year where I kind of want to unpack some of the work we did during the no buy. And during the no buy, I, I interacted with and talked to so many people. I've talked to people who owned makeup brands. I've talked to world famous makeup artists. I've talked to other YouTubers. I've talked to the average shopper. I, I've heard tons of opinions and vantage points on the work I was doing at the time because it was more than just don't buy makeup. It was more like we need to be talking about our motivations here. And like I said, there is a theme that is the theme of what I'm trying to like bring to the channel where I think we're just going to cultivate some intention and understanding behind many of our choices. And if beauty is one of the main catalysts for looking at ourselves, then so be it. Now, what I mean is like, when I decided to stop buying makeup, it wasn't just a financial decision. I mean, it was, it had a lot to do with that. I wanted to see if I could like stretch my financial responsibility legs and what would happen if I did. But it honestly didn't stem solely from that. <laughs> it stemmed way more from just buying fatigue and like makeup fatigue and just being very uninterested in all of this stuff and feeling like it wasn't the place or the thing for me anymore. And more importantly, I wanted to stop making content the way that I had been making it. So what I'm trying to introduce to you is the connection for me between the feeling that I had and the choice that I made. And the reason that I feel like it's important to illuminate this is because one of the questions I got asked the most during my no buy is like, how did you do this? Wasn't it so hard? And I kept telling everybody, no, it's not hard at all because it's what I want to do. And that is what I would like to talk about today. We're really not going to change anything about ourselves or our actions 
until we are ready to. So honestly, every time I made a video where I would be like, here's five reasons why you don't do this and five reasons why you don't do that. I mean, I was like talking to you guys, but this was stuff that I was learning about on my own and dealing with and experiencing and unpacking on my own. And if it happened to resonate with people, great, but it was a journey I was already going on. And as a result of that intense, focused intention, that is what made it so not difficult for me. The temptation wasn't there because the motivation wasn't there. And the motivation wasn't there because the behavior was understood and unpacked. I, I was learning that what I had been doing was, yes, I love makeup. I've always loved it. I'm always going to love it. But once the YouTube platform and the beauty community itself took this massive shift towards a lot more consumer-driven products, I just was following along. And that's what I kept making videos telling you guys not to do because that's where you run into trouble ultimately. And that is what we have to start focusing more on, I think, is like our intentions and what we actually want to do because otherwise, this brings me to my next point um, and why another reason I wanted to make this video, you're just going to go right back to what you were doing before. It's a big reason why people who go on like really extreme crash diets over and over again do that because they kind of enjoy that process. A lot of people, their habits, particularly their bad ones are cycles. You will notice it over and over and over again. I'm, I'm bringing all this up to say that if you're asking me these kinds of times of questions, was it really hard for you? And did you go right back to buying makeup all the time? I'm answering it this way because I feel like if these feel like barriers for you and why you couldn't do a no buy or any other thing, perhaps there is something to that and you should look into it. That to me that says, you see how that would be difficult for you, but why? Why would that be difficult for you? There is something underneath that. I kind of feel like everything we do in life, it manifests itself into the world, kind of like a pyramid, okay? So at the top of the pyramid, you have the behavior or the achievement or the disaster or whatever. That's what everybody else is gonna see. And at the bottom of the pyramid, you have the actions that you take every single day. This is such a funny little thing I'm doing right here. It's like a little mouth. You guys ever seen a labyrinth? Which way do you want to go? Anyway, the bottom of the period down pyramid down here is what you're doing every day. And then as you move up the pyramid, that is how you get to the to the top of it. That is why you see the behavior because it starts with what you do every day and then it's gonna start with like intense focused action and then it's gonna go into things you're actively choosing not to do. All of these things result in the top of the pyramid and you have to get the bottom of the pyramid right first. And as far as no buys and stuff like that go, in particular, in particular as it pertains to the world that we're living in right now versus the one we were living in in 2019 when I was making all that content, I feel now more than ever is a great time for us to just start examining a lot of our habits and our behaviors, our motivations and all that kind of stuff. And it's something I would like to talk about a lot more, especially around money, because that was another thing about the, the no buy people asked me a lot about was, um, did it change the way I feel about buying makeup? Like, did it change the way that I feel about paying price tags for makeup and stuff like that? And of course it did. Uh, hopefully, like that was one of the things that I wasn't expecting to get out of it, as dumb as that sounds, but I definitely did. It really just made me examine my relationship with money a lot more, which I think if you're doing the right work, it should really help you examine your relationship with yourself. Your relationship with money, not even just your money, but money in general, really is very indicative of your relationship with yourself. So that is why a lot of times when I was talking about no buys and don't buy makeup, it was a lot more than me just being like, this is stupid, don't buy it. I was trying to talk more about, again, our motivations and understanding why we're making or not making these choices. And here's what I mean by that. When it comes to a no buy or it comes to making financial decisions around the value of any given item, which was essentially what we were talking about a lot, you know, is this worth $150? That's nonsense. Like we could, we could debate the monetary value of something all day. But honestly, what matters is what does that mean to you? What value does it hold for you? Or, or is this value real at all? Or is it in, for, in fact perceived? And here, here's where I feel like if you're not taking inventory of this, you get into trouble. If you are the type of person who believes that you have a right 
or it is completely acceptable and normal for you to spend, you know, 40% of your paycheck on beauty products, expensive beauty products, because you have convinced yourself that buying something is the same thing as showing care for yourself, that that is a problem. Again, like that's why you have to really understand the motivations behind what is driving you to spend and what is driving you not to spend. So I definitely think, you know, we have reached a point where the anti-haul, the anti-consumerism, all that stuff, um, they've now become trends. And I think there's so much good that can come from that. But I think if we're not careful, we could take three steps forward and four steps backwards. If we're gonna treat anti-consumerism and anti-haul content and things like that as a trend and something strictly for entertainment, which is why I think some people get so mad about this type of content because they're only viewing it through the lens of entertainment as opposed to something that could help them. If we're only gonna do it that way, then I think once the tide turns and things go back to being like, you know, the good the good old days, it's feast and famine all the time in life, then the anti-consumerism, anti-haul type of content will fall off and therefore the messages that come along with it will. I can't speak for everyone because honestly I don't watch beauty content. I say it all the time, you guys, and I mean it. I genuinely don't. So I don't really know what other people are talking about or how they're framing this particular type of content. But I would just hope that if you're gonna engage in it, if you're gonna create it, or if you're going to follow it closely, that if you're gonna bother doing it, make sure you're getting everything that you possibly can out of it. Does that make sense? Otherwise, as I was trying to say before, you will go right back into the negative behaviors that inspired you or required you to take the no buy plunge anyway. So to answer the question this video poses, do I recommend makeup no buys? I'm gonna say that if you intend while you're on this no buy to actually get a better understanding of yourself and your choices that led you to the place where you have needed or declared that you need a makeup no buy, then there's no point in doing it. I would say don't even bother because Real change only comes when we want it to come anyway. We're not gonna change anything if we're white knuckling the whole way through it. it. It becomes easy when you have taken the time to work out why it's so hard. Why is this so hard for you? So that was just a little quick video, something that's been on my heart, my mind, and my spirit. We're getting to that time of year again when I start thinking about the next year and the next phase of life. and. The tone of this video, I hope will illuminate some of the stuff that is coming and I hope you guys are excited about it. And otherwise, let me know what you think about no buys and all the anti-haul, anti-consumers and content. Um, has it helped you? And if so, how? Please leave so down below. What have you learned about yourself in this process? And as always, a thank you to the patrons. The Patreon live stream announcement has already gone up. So if you are interested in joining us for live streams this month, now is the time to join. We love the live streams, just get to hang out and have a good time together. And I would like to do one live stream a month where we do a Zoom call. We did our first one last month for the book club. And no, we didn't do it for the book club. We did it for like an anniversary party, a one year Patreon anniversary party. Uh, but I would like to do them frequently. Still kind of working out the bugs, but I think it would be fun. Anyway, I hope you guys are having an amazing day. Check the down bar for links on my social media platforms. And I will catch you in the next one.